Welcome back to VMware Explore 2024. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Rob Strecce. This is day three. We've been extracting the signal from the noise all week. VMware Explore, well, this is our 15th VMworld slash VMware Explore, and theCUBE is super excited to be here. Rob and I, two weeks ago, wrote a piece, kind of a preview to this. The folks at VMware saw it and said, hey, let's double click on that. We want to share some data with you, specifically dig into the co total cost of ownership. Everybody's talking about the license and the shift from perpetual to subscription, and oh, my price increases, okay. But as we know, that the capital cost, or in this case, the license cost and the subscription cost are only a small fraction of the total cost of ownership. So we want to dig into that with Drew Nielsen, who's the product marketing strategy lead for VCF division at Broadcom. Drew, thanks for coming on. We appreciate yeah. you bringing some slide props and we're going to dig into it. Um, welcome, before we get started, you got a background in this. Talk about your role and, and sort of how you spend your time digging into all this data. It uh, takes a special talent. Yeah, yeah. good to be here again. And Drew Nielsen, so I lead cloud economics in the VCF division at Broadcom. So my role is developing the sales tools from a TCO ROI and value perspective to enable our sellers to show the value of VCF for our customers and give them a transparent and very intellectually honest assessment of where they are and where they want to go. Yeah, so we're going to dig into this and try to understand the, the real cost, the true cost, the assumptions behind that, you know, when it's you know, valid what the assumptions are, when it may not be the be best fit for customers. No, bring up that first slide, the disclaimer. We got to get this out of the way. Certain information is presentation, blah, 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 blee, blee, blee. May outline Broadcom's general direction. They're not responsible for any changes. So read this at your leisure. This is the CYA. We got that out of the way. Get rid of this slide and we'll get into the real meat. So, this next, uh, slide we want to show you just to set this up. This is VMware Cloud Foundation, the strategy. We've been talking all week about the, the all in, right? This is really where the value rubber meets the road. Uh, the fundamental premise here is that if you buy in to the full package, the full stack of the compute, the storage, the networking, the automation, all the developer interfaces, the containers, the AL, ML and AI tooling, and on top of that, all the other advanced services, like private AI, the DR stuff, we talked about you know, live recovery, we've talked about advanced security uh, this week, all the data services, all inside of that, that's the full package, and if you lean into that is the premise, then you're going to have the best TCO. Uh, so, Drew, did I get it right? Um, got it right. In terms of that overall package, yep. and that's the assumptions that we're making here, with the data that we're going to dig into. Yeah, I mean, this is a complete stack. It's a singular offering. With Broadcom and VCF's new focus on this platform, it really helps customers take the value of virtualization and drive that deeper into their infrastructure stack. And as they go on that journey, they're finding that, hey, I'm running into silos that I may not have known were there. But it also helps customers to say, look, how do I expand that value across my entire infrastructure? Because if you look at what our customers want, they want more business agility. The CFO wants lower OPEX. The security team wants a single vendor you know, with less integration. And IT is trying to escape tech debt and get to a modernized infrastructure that they've been longing for for years. And this platform really enables that. All right, great. So let's, let's zoom out, um, bring up this next slide, this reduced total cost of ownership yep. with VMware Cloud Foundation. If I'm a Broadcom VMware sales rep, I'm going to take this slide, it's my bumper sticker slide, I'm going to stick it on the elevator, and right when the C CEO walks in, I'm going to say, listen, here it is right here. So Drew, some big numbers here, take us through uh, this, this data. Yeah, so as we look at TCO and value within VCF, it really boils down to three core areas. Infrastructure savings, facility savings, labor productivity. And so what we see, because we do probably about 600 of these TCO ROI models every quarter with, within our strategic segment as well as all of our other segments. And the averages of these come out, it's like about 55% savings on infrastructure, 31% on your facilities, and about 42% down on your labor productivity. And one of the things that we want to be really clear about, when we talk about labor productivity, this is not about sending people home <coughs> within the current climate. This is really about how do I make IT services delivery better, faster, quicker, and the business more agile. 
Now out of that math, we look at, say look, if you're in a three tier architecture, you've got a different vendor for compute, a different vendor for storage, a different vendor for networking, that move from that platform style to VCF, that'll save you about 50%, give or take. And look, your mileage is going to vary. We run these for a lot of different customers. And so as we look at those numbers, that may float a little bit, but these are averages. Cloud, it's about a 41% savings, give or take, in that area. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times when we look go to customers, it's very much about, I'm at this decision point in this crossroads of like, do I keep building it? Do I go to public cloud? And that's usually, usually there's an initiative like, I don't know how many customers I can tell you that I talked to are like, we're on year six of a four year cloud first, you know, marathon, if you will. And that's literally what it is. And they're like, I'm like, how many workloads have you moved? Oh, about five or six. Mm -hmm. And out of how many? Hundreds. Yeah. yeah and that's I, just the reality. Yeah, I mean, I, I think again, it, it, there's, I, definitely a balance. I, I think we're not as strong on the repatriation side as Hawk was it <laughs> yesterday morning, but I think what we look at is that the right place for the right workload <laughs> with the right systems around it, and it would seem to your point, and we were just talking with Mike, yep. uh, again and on here about you know, what, what he's seeing from those same customers that he's having the conversations with, and uh, with Stephen Elliott, I think part of the discussion was that, I, I think that yeah, you, when you buy into the full stack, you get that. And I, I think some of the discussions with some of the customers has been, well, I'm, I'm now uh, adding in NSX to my networking stack as well. So I had Cisco and Arista, now I'm bringing you know, in NSX as well. Uh, what do you say to them when they're, they're, there's that, or, that increased labor productivity is really aimed at simplifying that, but now they're actually adding to that. How does that it's factor It's not in? really an add though, because if you really want the value and the, the numbers that you see on this chart, you're going to adopt the whole stack. And you know, if you want to talk about Cisco and Arista for a minute, it's like, look, if I bring in NSX, I will run your Cisco and Arista far more efficiently than they're running today. Because I'm in a single interface where I have all that visibility and all of that logistics into telemetry data being like, okay, I want to automate my network functions. Or in the case of storage, which is where our customers are getting absolutely killed in the public cloud on storage costs, is just how do I take some of those, to your point, the right workload in the right place, how do I take some of those second and third tier workloads, get them off the monolithic storage arrays, put them on to commoditized x86 storage like on a PowerFlex, and go from there. But with VCF and like on the platform side that Dave showed, it's very much, if you want to be on-prem, you want to be in a cloud, as long as you have that VCF powered environment everywhere you are, you have workload mobility. You move it wherever you want, anytime you want. I mean, I've had customers I've seen who've gone like, okay, I may have some stuff in VCF and Google Cloud, I want to move it back on-prem. They'll move 800 workloads in a weekend and think nothing of it. So, and that's really the vision, but if you want that, I mean, if you want you know, the holy grail of all this, you've got to go all in. There's so Drew, just no way around it. You, you mentioned, you're not, and when you talked about the labor productivity, you're not, you said we're not talking about getting rid of people, mm -hmm. so you're not coming in here as the hatchet man. No. However, the CFO might say, oh, okay, so that's soft dollars, uh, so I'm not going to be able to reduce headcount. What do you say to that? You can reprioritize your labor force as you see fit. A lot of times those people get moved on to more strategic initiatives, and they have more time to actually work on the modernization processes, rather than fighting the day-to-day -day fires of you know, a three-tier infrastructure. I mean, think of it like building a house, right? If like I build a house and I say, look, I'm going to get concrete from three vendors. Three different types of concrete, three different water mixes, three different pours. Over time, that has cracks in it, and then what do we do? We put our workloads on top of this foundation of different compute network and storage vendors. So, when you go to VCF, you're buying concrete from one vendor. Yeah. And that's where that was what drives the value home. And I would add to my response to the CFO would also be, well look, you probably have a plan to hire more people. So you yeah. can you can maybe stave those off for you know, some period of time. All right, let's go to the next slide, TCO reduction with VMware Cloud Foundation, because this is the double click on the previous slide, and this shows the right. granularity of where you're getting those savings. Uh, it shows uh, the categories of infrastructure, software, facilities, labor, support, and migration, um, which is an evil word, so that should be, 
you know, <laughs> just you should flash that in red because that is just the <coughs> worst that anybody, you know, the, the piece that everybody wants to avoid. And then three columns, traditional data center, so that's where you are today, native public cloud, because a lot of people are thinking about going to that public cloud, and then the third column is all in with VCF. Uh, so so it, it, this is very interesting, and it's, and it's showing the TCO, the reduction in total cost of ownership, so the big hit is actually an infrastructure, that's interesting, I presume you're consolidating, and of course the other big hit uh, is certainly labor, facilities, and, and, and so forth, and even saving on... Uh, and don't forget the software costs. Software costs are significant, and the migration costs, there's, that's like telephone numbers um, to migrate, <laughs> to rip and replace. So, so Drew, take us through the nuance in this, in this sure. data. So as you walk through this, like you said, it's traditional infrastructure versus public cloud versus VCF. And if you start in that first column, you come down to about $5.9 million. That is what we call the cost of doing nothing. That is what you are doing today. That is your current tech debt stack. That is what you have. And as you go through that, you see, you know, what do we have here? 3.2 million on infra cost. Software, which is the VMware licensing cost, 400. Facilities and labor at 1.1. 69K for service and support. So that assumes perpetual licensing at SNS. That, like I said, cost of doing nothing. So a lot of our customers have gone to public cloud and you see, hey, my infrastructure cost went up from 3.2 to 3.7, a lot of that is storage. But the key number there is that 1.1 million in software underneath, because that is what we call the functional equivalence cost. In the sense of, I've moved to public cloud, but now I've got to put all these services in to act like what I have in my data center. Like what, like what's an example? CloudWatch, CloudTrail, VPN gateways, packet mirroring, network load balancers, there's a list of about 10 or 12 things we could put on there. Those add up to very serious money over time. It's a lot of the PaaS that's a in lot there. Of, yeah. Yeah. A, a lot, lot of, of that. PaaS services. Obviously facilities go down because you're here in somebody else's, your labor goes down because there are less assets to manage, and then the support cost, that's usually one that jumps out at a lot of people, largely because they're like, oh, I'm going to go to cloud. It's like, wait, I don't have that four hour, two hour golden touch response time that I get with a, from a vendor like VMware or other traditional vendors. So you're, you're paying out of pocket for that. And then the migration cost. And this is where it gets really interesting really quick. Because within those numbers, that assumes 1,000 VMs at about $1,000 per VM to migrate to cloud. But you also have to take that number on a bell curve, because in any organization, 20% of your workloads are just difficult to move. Your CRMs, your SAPs, your Oracle databases, there's a lot of business risk anytime you start moving, thinking about moving those to a public cloud. There's a lot of dependencies there. Then you've got the 60% or like your tier two apps. You can kind of move them, and that's what's already gotten to cloud. But does that take into account the, the, the migration cost that, or it, that help me understand it? Or is it in the software cost, like for instance, Oracle on AWS is way more expensive than Oracle It is, on that number Brown. does not, that you're seeing on the screen. Okay. Can you bring that back up, Nolan? That yeah. same slide, the TCO reduction with VMware Because Cloud. there's also costs around, hey, I've got to run two environments at the same time. Okay. As I'm migrating, because I got to keep my, production in my data center running, and I've got to run something in the public cloud. Okay. So these numbers, depending on your infrastructure, fluctuate greatly. Uh, and in and are you assuming like best case cloud cost reserve instances? Yeah, this is, oh yeah, Or yes. even optimized instances? It's yeah, not, this is our eyes. On demand, There's right? no discounting on the slide. This is just all in straight numbers. So is it on demand cost from no, the cloud? But or no, is it? for the Amazon it is our eyes. So, okay, There's, and this is, you didn't say it here, but this is a reference would be AWS. Yeah. Okay, so the, the first column is your base case. You're saving 2.9 million going to VMware Cloud mm -hmm. Foundation, 3.7 million relative to the public cloud. Yeah, in public pricing, so. And again, the assumption is you're going all in on VM, VMware Cloud Foundation, which is not the majority of customers today. So that's your mm -hmm. big challenge, obviously, as an organization, sure. is to get people there, and you're you're quantifying the yeah, value of doing absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's as you transition to VCF, you also see on average, like 80% of our customers have not right sized at all. So if you look at even as Broadcom itself has become a customer of VCF, 
I mean, we're currently running our servers at like 92% utilization with, and we have 157 people in IT running a 30,000 right. person organization. But on average what we see is about a 33% reduction in infrastructure just by going to VCF. Yeah. You know, over subscription, consolidating workloads, putting the right workloads on the right infrastructure, and that drives that cost down. And then from there it's kind of, it cascades down because your software costs may go up a little bit, but then it's like, look, I have less facilities usage. I have less labor deployed just to run my infrastructure, which really, what is infrastructure but style tone, it's the things that you just expect to be there. Yeah, and, and, then, and I think part of it was, and, and it was in the upper right hand corner, and people can go back and look at it, was again, going, the number of hosts goes mm -hmm. down by 15, so it's, you know, like you said, that 33% reduction in hosts, yeah. which helps with that licensing, you know, trauma that people are going yep. through from that perspective, and I, I think that, to me was is kind of the big piece because also when you start to go to you're sweating those assets more it, sure. that that has to be part of like the messaging that they're going out with is hey you you <laughs> to Dave's point zero percent interest rates for you know ten years you didn't have to sweat the assets as hard as you might want to do that now but there also has to be an inflection point here where AI people are going out and buying new kit they're buying GPUs they're buying new servers. That must be a, you know, they must be thinking, hey, we're also getting better cores when we get these new servers as well, which can enable us to go and, so are they seeing, is like you said, it's the 40%, you know, savings over public cloud alone, but they may be saying, hey, maybe I can even get past that. Absolutely, I mean, we see a lot of customers when they move to VCF, let's say they're on a Intel Gen 2 core platform, they'll move to a Gen 4, and they'll consolidate those cores even more to get those numbers lower that you see on the screen. So, let's bring up the next slide, cloud cost avoidance. This one, Drew, really caught my attention because uh, most of the analysis that I've seen on increases in, in, in license costs have been over a three year period, and you say, yeah, but if I stretch that over three, four, five, 10 years, uh, my, my license costs are going to go up because it's SaaS, it's, well, it's a subscription model. But this really caught my attention because it's, uh, uh, avoidance, so set this up. What are we looking at here in so, terms of the scope of the, the example and explain uh, this cost avoidance? So let's, let's start with a little background here. This is a large healthcare customer that we've been working with and when they initially came to us to talk about VCF and where they're going long term, we said, all right, look, let's take a pause. Let's look at your workloads. So we dove into their workloads and we said, we found 85% of their workloads are running in the private cloud on VCF on-prem. 15% are sitting out in public cloud. And then we said, all right, great. What are you spending on those workloads? And then the pie chart literally split down the middle. And it's a, about 47% of the budget goes for those 14% of workloads in the public cloud. 53 towards what is running on VCF okay. today. So that was an eye opener. And then we said, all right, look, with our tools, we think you're paying about 4X more for public cloud than VCF. They're like, well no, our executives think we're at two, and like, fine, we'll split the difference, we'll go in the middle. And then we said, all right, as we go through this, and this is where we get into the, the avoidance, if you look at the spend. Hey, bring that back up, guys, if you would. And if you look at the spend on VCF, even if we just say, look, we agree at the 2X number, to date, we've already avoided close to 300 million in cloud costs, just out of the gate. Because, and then we said, look, the, four, the 3X number, that comes in at about 400, and, I think $412 million. And then even longer term, and you know, if we ride that, sort of that median 3X line out to 10 years, you're looking at close to 1.6 billion in savings. Because as you're out there, the storage costs in cloud get more expensive, you're in bigger instances, you're moving more stuff out there, and that just keeps going and going. But the other piece of that, as you look at this cloud infrastructure, it's like, think of solar panels. Usually, if you buy solar panels for your house, you can either buy them or you can lease them. If you buy them, you own the asset. You get all the tax breaks, you get all the benefits from that. If you lease them, the leasing company gets that. So as this customer found out, and a lot of our other ones have, it's like, look, I can have all this infrastructure, and I can oversubscribe it, I get all those benefits, you know, why give that up? I love this conversation. 
We, we don't just do sound bites on theCUBE, we go deep. <laughs> uh, we'd love to double click on this. Uh, so, how are you getting the word out? I mean, you can go belly to belly. Obviously, you, got, you now got a video you can take and, yep. and that scales. And uh, so how do customers uh, get in touch with either somebody on your team or you to be able to go through an analysis like this? Are you available to help customers? And, oh, absolutely. And take yeah. all the hard questions? And yeah, we have, look, we have an entire team that works on this. Um, you know, Mike Gannon, who was just here before, all of his reps know how to find us. So any VMware sales rep, has access to what we call the VMware Value Modeler, which is the tool that does these outputs. Um, their customer merely has to reach out to them, say, look, I'd like to do a TCO model with you. All that we ask is for, look, three one-hour sessions with like an IT finance or whatever finance department is handling the IT spend with in your organization. We sit down and we go numbers to numbers and we say, look, we're going to produce a transparent, intellectually honest TCO and ROI model so that you can move from where you are today to where you want to be in the future. So first session is data gathering. Uh, yep. Second session is here's, we, here's a framework for what we initially see, yep. initial assumptions, tighten them up. They, they challenge those assumptions, yep. well fix this, fix that, or oh we gave you some data that's not correct, use this assumption, et cetera. Yeah, it's really, fine tuning. Right, it's really a business value analysis, yep. a business value realization, once you've done that collection. Okay, and then the third session is the, sort of the final presentation, and presumably, the proposal. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right. <laughs> True. Thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. Right. Great stuff, really yes, great thanks. working with you, thank, thank you. you. All right, keep it right there. Rob Stretch and I'll be back to wrap up day three, VMware Explore 2023. You're watching theCUBE.